Hey, this is Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and today we're going to talk about how to integrate Airtable with both Google Forms and Google Sheets. Now, the great news is, is that both of these integrations are considered native or out of the box, meaning that you don't have to use any other tools like Zapier or Make to be able to integrate them. You don't have to write any code. They just simply work. Let's jump in how we can utilize these integrations. So the first thing, I've just set up a quick base and a table here. Doesn't have to be anything special, but the idea is that we wanna be able to map the fields that we have inside of our Airtable table and map that to what we have inside of Google Sheets. So you'll notice that I have a first name field, a last name, an email, and then I also have uh, a concatenation, which just brings our first and last name together. But we don't have to worry about that inside of the Google Sheet, which doesn't really rely on a primary key there. I also have a data source field, and in that data source field, we can either programmatically or ourselves select where that data is coming from. And I think this is just a best practice so that you can keep track, especially if you have multiple data sources writing to the same table. Now, if I head into my Google spreadsheet, very similar. I've got a first name, last name, and email. And then I've added an additional column for Airtable URL. Because if I'm actually going back and forth between my spreadsheet and the table, there's a chance I might want to be able to link to the actual record to make it easy to find. So we're going to write that Airtable URL if we're creating the actual record inside of Airtable. In this case, we're going to start with a record or a row inside of Google Sheets and sending it into Airtable. To do that, all we need to do is set up an automation. And this first automation I've got, I've called create record from Google Sheet. And so the trigger that I have is when a row is created. So if you scroll down here, you'll see Google Sheets, and there's only a single option for that of when a row is created. Now that makes it easy to be able to select, but for those of you who are wondering, oh man, this would be awesome. Could I have it keep these spreadsheets and my base totally in sync? Unfortunately, the answer with this native integration is no. When a record's created, you can create that record. When the record is created, you can create that record. But you can't do something like, oh, when the record's updated, then go ahead and update it in Airtable. Or if I delete it, then delete it in Airtable. So we can do bi-directionality, writing data to both systems, but we can't do updates and deletes, which makes that a little bit frustrating for some people, but still a very good uh, tool, especially when you've got information like leads coming in from other systems and we wanna be able to write that into Airtable. From here, we've got our trigger set up. The first time you go through this, you're going to end up selecting a Google Sheets account and it'll just have you authenticate uh, and give it the permissions to be able to do so. And then you'll be able to see a list of your spreadsheets to choose from. You can select the spreadsheet and then select the specific worksheet. And that just defaults to sheet one unless you have additional worksheets within your spreadsheet. And then from here, I wanted to create a conditional action. And what I'm saying is, if that Airtable URL is empty, then that's when we want to go ahead and create our record. And the reason that is, is because we're going to end up sending some data back when we create records inside of Airtable. Now you don't have to worry about this. If you're just writing data from Google Sheets into Airtable, don't even worry about that Airtable URL field. But in this case, because I want to write data in both directions, I think it's just a best practice to be able to see essentially where that record is created. So we're adding the condition here to say if row values, the Airtable URL is empty, and that's coming again from that spreadsheet. So I'm able to select the row value and say it's empty. Then we're going to go ahead and create a record. And so this action is one of the most common ones to create a record. And when we create it, then we'll be able to tell it which table. I only have a single table called leads. And here's where I can then map the values. So you can choose from the different values that we have. And this automatically pulls it in, which is really handy to look at to see those values. So we have Airtable URL, first name, last name, and email. And you can even see that with your test record there. So we've got all of these, which are dynamically populated from the spreadsheet. And then we're manually just setting this data source to Google Sheet. We could set it from Google Form if it was coming from a form, but in this case, we're saying Google Sheet. 
And remember this is configurable, so you can call this whatever you want it to be. Instead of generating a preview, I wanted to actually write that record because currently I don't have any records here. So let's go ahead and run as configured and I will run the test. And it says our record is created, so let's go check it out. And here we go, we've got our new record that was just created. Again, remember, because we concatenate this, really we didn't have to do anything on the Google Sheet side of things, automatically created our record, and it stamped that Google Sheet as the data source. Awesome, so we've successfully written from a Google Sheet into Airtable, let's try the other way around. If I go back into automations and create row from Airtable record, this time I'm saying our action is when a record is created. And this is when a record is created inside of Airtable, just to be clear. And then we are going to say, if a data source is empty, meaning that no data source was assigned, then we are going to go ahead and use our append row action. And so this time for our actions, instead of creating a record up here inside of Airtable, we scroll down to Google Sheets. And again, remember that this is the only action we can do with Google Sheets. So there isn't the ability to look up a record and update it. We can't delete a record. All we're doing is we're adding a new row, appending a new row into that spreadsheet. Same thing, we choose the spreadsheet, we choose the worksheet. And this is where we map the corresponding fields to the corresponding columns inside of Google Sheets. So at this point, I could test this. Now, if I turn this on, I want you to catch what happens here. And I've intentionally set this up in not the most ideal way, just to give you a flavor for how this would work in real life. So there's something in, if we're developing called race conditions, and this is similar on the Airtable side of things, where let's say I go and I'm creating a record. Well, if you know anything about Airtable, you'll know that autosave functionality is awesome. It, it makes life pretty easy as you're working through this. That happens to be much more difficult when it comes to integrations because at what point are you actually saving that record? So notice as I start typing here, I'm gonna add Han Solo and notice it's got the H for the name. We can already tell that stuff is being kind of goofy because it takes a second to catch up. If we check over here, oh no, it's already written that data over. So basically from the second that you click in and you start entering data, it's created the record. And technically what's happening is as you're adding the additional characters, it's updating that record in the background. Well, again, if you remember back to the beginning, one of the problems with this integration is that it doesn't run on updates. It only runs on the creation of a record. So now even when I'm finished filling this out, it's not going to actually push the right data in. It just has this record. And granted, I mean, it's linked to the correct record here, but we're not actually going to be able to see the names and the email address inside of here. So that's not an ideal way of doing this. I wanted to show you that just so that you had an idea of how that works so that you can set it up correctly yourself. Instead, I'm going to change the trigger from when a record is created to, we could do when a record enters a view, but I'm just going to say when a record matches conditions. So I am going to change the trigger here. We will run it on our leads. And now we need to add that condition. And the condition is going to be when that data source is set to Airtable. And the reason we're going to do this is because as we create the record and we're typing the information across, we're going to not set that data source yet. And our very last step will be to manually set it. And we'll use that to essentially signal the system, this is ready to go, push it across. We'll leave that the way it is. Because of that, we don't need this conditional action here anymore. I'm gonna move this up top and we don't need this group anymore. Once we match that condition, we should be good to go. We've got this on and I'm going to update it. Now let's go back over to our data and let's add a new one here. And we'll say old. Bruce Wayne, 
Bruce Enterprise. Okay. So at this point, this is good. It hasn't done anything to create that record yet. Now let's go ahead and tell it Airtable. So all changes are saved, and that's exactly what we need to be able to trigger it. So this is that setup that you now want. If we click through on the link, we have that nice user experience of being able to open up immediately to the correct record that we want. So that's how we have the ability to be able to write both directions on creation of records from Google Sheets and Airtable to one another. And honestly, Google Forms is a piece of cake. And the reason this is, they make it seem like, oh, it's this other integration, Google Forms. We've got the, the purple colored icon. But the reality of the situation is that when you have a Google Form, the responses are saved into a spreadsheet. So this is Google Form for Airtable responses. And so you can set up all your questions and everything else the way you want. But what it really does is the exact same thing. So you end up configuring it for Google Forms. You still have to give it permissions, but then you end up sending it to the same spreadsheet and you run this the exact same way as you would Google Sheets. I think for folks, if you've gotten a chance to watch our complete video on Airtable Forms, we go through all of these really complex scenarios and some people kind of rip their hair out and say, oh, I, I can't use Airtable Forms, I need to use something else. In which case, oftentimes they're utilizing Google Forms. And this is helpful because it is a free integration. And so if you're just trying to say, I need a replacement for Airtable Forms, let me use Google. And you don't wanna to have to worry about using a third-party system to integrate the two. This is what makes that a piece of cake. So the integration itself, exactly the same as what you need to do for Google Sheets. Hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below.